Hey, this is Dan from bodybuilderinthailand.com. Today I'm going to talk about um, anabolic steroid esters, such as enanthate, propionate, cypionate, whatever, and explain them. Uh, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Uh, do not promote the use of any of these substances. I'm simply talking about my own experiences and my own research and education into these uh, substances. And uh, this is harm reduction. Education equals harm reduction. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and um, steroid esters explained. So typically, you know, you have different types of testosterone, right? We're gonna talk about testosterone first, but this applies to any injectable steroid hormone, okay? So testosterone, a lot of times you'll hear about it in, uh, you're like, oh, testosterone and anthate, testosterone cypionate, or cypionate, uh, sustenon, or testosterone propionate, test suspension. And you're like, I hear a lot of guys who are new say like, oh, well, is that really strong? Is that, well, is that testosterone really strong? And you know, that it's, it's an interesting question because actually the different testosterones do differ in strengths. And a lot of people will go, no, 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 test is test. But uh, as we're gonna find out, as we talk about the esters, the different esters do actually have different strengths associated with them. So first, Let's talk about, um, I like to use testosterone as the example, and let's use pure isolated testosterone. Test suspension. Test suspension is either uh, just, it's pure testosterone crystal dissolved either in water or sometimes they put it in oil, but it's, it's traditionally always been in water. So 100 milligrams of test suspension is 100 milligrams of testosterone that will go into your blood, okay? There's no ester, it's just pure testosterone crystals. So you're getting that full 100 milligrams. Now let's go to um, test acetate, okay? Test acetate, a lot of people, think, pe a lot of times people associate acetate with trenbolone because that is, uh, you know, 100 milligrams of trenbolone, uh, a lot of times that'll be the trenbolone acetate, that'll be the dosage on that, right? So. So acetate ester is, it takes up room in the, in the chemical, right? So if you have 100 milligrams of test suspension, you have 100 milligrams of test suspension. Now, if you have 100 milligrams of test acetate, that acetate molecule takes up room in that 100 milligrams. So it takes up roughly 17 milligrams out of the 100 milligrams. So you're left with like 83, 85 milligrams of the actual hormone. So if you see injecting 100 milligrams of testosterone suspension is more potent than injecting 100 milligrams of testosterone acetate because there's no ester in the test suspension, but there is ester taking up room within the hormone, uh, within that 100 milligrams in acetate. And so acetate is generally like the fastest acting ester that is applied to a steroid hormone, but there also is uh, other esters that are very common, and there's also long-acting esters, and you're going to see that generally long-acting esters take up more room in the hormone than shorter-acting esters. So generally, a, you know, like for example, 700 milligrams of a short ester is going to yield more actual hormone and therefore more strength, a stronger hormone, a stronger compound in the body than 700 milligrams of a long ester. So for example, test propionate. This is a, propionate is another ester, right? That can be applied to testosterone. Very popular ester, it's a fast acting ester, peaks in the blood, you know, a couple hours after injection. And then you have test anethate, where test anethate is a very longer ester, right? It peaks in the blood about 24 to 48 hours after injection, but it stays elevated for a long time, right? It doesn't really go down much for about a week. Uh, whereas testosterone propionate is completely out of your system after a week. All right, so test propionate, it's, it's pretty similar to the propionate ester. It's pretty similar to the acetate ester. And it's roughly like 80 milligrams out of 100. So the, the propionate ester out of 100 milligrams takes up about 20 milligrams of space. So if you take one cc of 100 milligrams per milliliter propionate, you're getting about 
80 milligrams of actual testosterone in your blood after that 20 milligrams of propionate ester has been removed and metabolized, destroyed by the body. Whereas another very popular ester, uh, ester uh, is test enantate, and test enantate, it takes up more room. Um, and that, that is helpful with the slower acting release. And so enantate, it's roughly like 70 milligrams uh, per 100 milliliters of actual testosterone. The enantate ester within 100 milligrams with 100 milligrams of testosterone, if I said milliliters a minute ago, that was a mistake, I meant milligrams. Uh, then, so you have 100 milligrams of testinante, you're really only getting about 70 milligrams of actual testosterone from that, and the other 30 milligrams are going to be in uh, ester weight. So the ester is taking up 30 milligrams of weight out of the 100 milligrams of testosterone. So a 100 milligram shot of testosterone enante yields about 70 milligrams of testosterone in the blood, whereas a 100 milligram shot of testosterone propionate yields about 80 milligrams of testosterone in the blood, and a shot of test suspension, 100 milligrams, equals a full 100 milligrams of testosterone in the blood because it has no ester taking up any room. All right, so you guys understand that now? So that's like basically, a lot of times when people say, uh, or when you're planning their cycle, you know, if you have a cycle that is 500 milligrams of testosterone and anthate per week, and you have a cycle that is 500 milligrams of testosterone propionate per week, actually the, the test propionate is stronger. It's a stronger cycle because you're actually getting more testosterone in your blood. Per 100 milligrams of testosterone, you're getting like, uh, like you know, another 10 to 15 milligrams. So. I've, let me think about that. So say you have, you know, 500 milligrams of test propionate, you're going to get uh, roughly like 450 milligrams of testosterone into, actually, no, you're going to get about 400 milligrams of testosterone uh, into your blood. And then with NNTA, you're going to get more like 325, 350 milligrams of testosterone in your blood. So see, there is a difference, and that's on 500 milligrams. So if you increase that then to like 1,000 milligrams, now you're talking 1,000 milligrams of test pro yields 700 milligrams of actual testosterone in your blood, or 800 milligrams, whereas 1,000 milligrams of test enantate yields 700 milligrams. Sorry, I just woke up. Uh, anyways, so that's how you can tell about uh, what is stronger, what is weaker. And if you're thinking like you had a good cycle and you really liked uh, a propionate ester, then say you you know you used a thousand milligrams of a propionate ester and you really en enjoyed that, and then you later used a thousand milligrams of an enantate ester and you're like, hmm, it's not as strong. Well, yeah, it's not as strong because you actually aren't getting as much actual testosterone hormone into your blood. Uh, you know, you're getting. 100 milligrams less out of that thousand milligrams of the actual testosterone. So obviously you can remedy that by you know taking a little bit more, uh, which would equal that. But there there is a difference, you know. There is a difference in strengths. So another thing is that like with the peaking times and everything, the a lot of people don't really know this, but test and ante is active in your system the next day after shooting it. Uh, it's like. 24 to 48 hours after shooting it, it's peaked in your bloodstream. And then it has a slow, sustained release because of the ester. Whereas something like test suspension with no ester, it peaks in your bloodstream within you know 30 to 40 minutes and uh, has a very quick crash down within four to six hours as it releases because your body metabolizes it. There's nothing preventing your body from destroying it. Your body metabolizes all hormones, your own hormones. Yeah, they come out in your urine. Uh, your natural testosterone, once it's been metabolized, it doesn't just last forever, it comes out in your urine. And the same thing happens with uh, you know, exogenous hormones that are put into the bloodstream. So exogenous means from the outside. So when you take hormones from the outside and put them into the bloodstream, they're broken down and metabolized, and they come out as metabolites in your urine. What esters do is they prevent the body from destroying and metabolizing the molecule and then pissing out the metabolites. So that's why people use esters is because you know how inconvenient that would be to do like a, say you wanted a stable blood level of test suspension. Well, you know, taking two shots of test enantate per week will give you 
very stable blood levels. Like, they're not going to be going up and down really much at all. Uh, whereas, you would need to be taking three injections of test suspension, so, so that's test no ester, a day to be getting stable blood levels. And, and they still wouldn't even be that stable, which honestly isn't a bad thing, because if you guys are aware, the way that hormones work in the body is not in a, you know, just linear way like this. They're always in peaks, always in peaks and valleys. You know, something as simple as assuming a posture like this. There's been studies where if somebody leans over a table and assumes a, like a dominant posture, their testosterone levels rise. Uh, same thing with people who are in positions of power, the testosterone levels rise. Uh, depending on what you're doing, when you're in a competitive situation, also your testosterone levels rise. So the testosterone levels aren't just like a, a flat uh, graph like this. Like a lot of people say, you know, I want stable blood levels. Well, that's not naturally how they are. Um, but esters do make, you know, the longer the ester, the easier it is to make a more stable blood level. Whereas if there's a short ester, it's going up and down more quickly. You know, like for example, test probe peaks in your system about two hours after injection. Uh, and then it's pretty much out about four days later like it's gone it's been pissed out uh whereas testosterone and anthate it's not leaving your system for three weeks completely so another thing with that too is that when you get such a fast rise like this uh with like something with the propionate it feels much stronger even at the same dosage because of how quickly all that hormone is going into your system you see 500 milligrams of test propionate is done in four days, whereas 500 milligrams of test and antate is not done for three weeks. So it's much more spread out over time, whereas the propionate is not. You know, you're really concentrating that dosage into this one uh, shorter segment of time. As a lot of people, uh, it, a lot of people say, you know, testosterone propionate feels completely different than testosterone and antate, and I'm one of them. But it does feel different because of the way that it's concentrated in that short period of time, the short peak and rise in the in the ester, and uh, also the fall. So they they feel different. A lot of people say, "Oh, esters don't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just a hormone." Well, they they do matter. They do have a fact. And the top coaches in the world absolutely also agree that they do have a fact. Uh, they have effect within water retention and things too. Like the longer a molecule is floating around in your body, the more opportunity it has to bind with something like aromatase enzyme and create estrogen. Or they have these high sustained levels that aren't just peaks, they're not transient. So then your body is going to raise aldosterone levels, which are, it's a, uh, it makes you retain water and sodium. It makes you more sensitive to sodium and water retention. Um, so when you have just a quick peak like this, like on a propionate ester, and it's just, you know, rising for a little bit each day or, you know, to suspension or something like that, your body isn't going to notice this massive, uh, just sustained high level, right? And it's not going to have as much need to create adaptation to combat that. Whereas something that just goes up and down really quickly, your body doesn't really need to create an adaptation to combat that by the time it realizes what's happening the level's already down again and then goes back up again the next morning right so the difference is it's it's more of a subtle differences guys there's not like major major differences but there are differences and yeah the the different steroid esters do feel different and they behave differently in the body they have different effects and as far as people saying like oh testosterone propionate does not carry more water than testosterone enantate uh, that's a myth. Well, that, that's not true. Those, those people, they're sadly, they're misinformed. They, uh, they have not realized that they, they have something right. It is just testosterone, you're right. So testosterone propionate and testosterone enanthate yield the same active hormone, testosterone, right? But because of the way that they enter the body and because of the way that they stay in the body uh, during their active life, the length of time that they stay uh, before being cleared, uh, they have different effects, all right? So this is uh, steroid esters explained. Do not attempt anything discussed in this video. Uh, this is for educational entertainment purposes only. This is Dan from Bodybuilder in Thailand.com.